We are back with another build episode of Demi's 1993 80 series Land Cruiser FZ. In this episode, we are, what are we doing? She's panicked. Sound system, visor, goal windows. Goal, 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 wingo, goal windows. <laughs> goal windows and some other little bits and pieces. Lots of cool things. And before we quickly jump into the episode, I will say, this is your last few days to enter the giveaway for our Opus camper trailer. So on our website, buy a shirt, hoodie, or one of the promotional giveaway packs, but it ends this Friday, the 30th of June. So you gotta be in it to win it. If you're on Anna, now's your last chance. On to the episode, boys. <laughs> Proudly supported by Ultimate Nine, Tread, Opus Campers, Superior Engineering, and in part by before we jump into it, I was also just editing and realized that I actually introduced Todd. So Todd is the one helping uh, in a lot of this episode build the 80 with us. If you've been watching the videos for a while, he helped build some of the GU Patrol I have a couple of years back. But yeah, Todd's a mechanic, does an absolutely awesome job. So he came along and helped us out for a couple of days. Okay, back with another episode of building Demi's 80 series Land Cruiser. What are we up to now? Episode four? I don't know. Four, I think. So we've got some cool things that we're gonna be doing in this episode. Just a whole, I don't know, bunch of different things whole going on. A array of miscellaneous items. Yeah. So the first couple of things that we are doing today is brown box install. Yep, yep. And show off your very favorite item there, a visor. Customized brown underneath white on the top so yeah they're gold wing windows from the, the cruiser, cruiser company. company and that is from roof rack world just because i know everyone's gonna ask where we got it from we ordered what like five months ago they take forever to get here but now since the last episode i mentioned this at the end of the last episode what we're going to do update on what we got done we got the seals repainted and touched up so they got rid of like a bit of rust and stuff that was on the seal they're freshly painted got rid of a dent Looking beautiful, yeah, one of the seals is dint, I got rid of that, so local guy, Lockie, did the seals. And my fresh new grill. Where we get it from? Toyota? Yeah. <laughs> so, we had trouble finding a grill, but turns out Toyota still stocked them. I think it was like $380, direct from Toyota. A brand new Series 1 factory grill. So that's what's been done since last time. Yeah. And then we will get started for today. I washed it. Yeah, first time in two months. Washed it. Nice and shiny. How are you feeling? We're about to drill into your nice roof. I'm nervous, I'm not gonna lie guys. But at least um, it's not you doing it. I feel like that makes me less nervous. We have sat the sun visor on and we're just obviously trying to eye it off lined up nicely. You can sort of move it around to sit higher or lower where you want, but we think we're happy with that spot there. Actually, imagine if it makes like a big wind whistle now under that, through that gap. <laughs> Scares the kangaroo. <laughs> and we're just going through the mounting of it too. So you got this bracket, which is going to get drilled up in there. And they actually gave us two tech screws to drill into your roof, which is just ridiculous. So we're gonna rib nut these instead and Todd's just gonna try and bend and trim this up to match nicely. But yeah, that's the tech screws they gave to drill into your roof. So you just nicked a little edge off them just to make them fit nicer. Well, just so that those ends sit inside the gutter, not up against it. So yeah, just working our way through fitting this visor like most things you buy from shops and never actually fits like it says it should. So there's a lot of little custom things you need to do. And then it doesn't fit over the chrome. So we're gonna have to cut a little section of that chrome bit out on that side. This side of the car doesn't actually have chrome, it's missing. So we don't have to worry about that. Drilled out those holes bigger now, so we're gonna put some rib nuts, nut certs in them. But since you've obviously drilled into the body of a car, you do have to be a little bit cautious of rust. 
Um, so I've got this to go in, which I was recommended, like a cavity wax. It's kind of like a yeah, rust protection that you can spray in there. And then we've got some color-coded white paint that we can wipe over it too. Just to, yeah, obviously reduce the risk of rust. And that was one of the things, reasons we can see not getting a visor because you've got to cut into the body and that's just a place for us to start. But, I don't know, four-wheel drives, we want it to look cool, is what it is. And, you know, when you do a snorkel, you cut into the body. When you do these gold wing windows, you cut into the body. So it's just going to be one of those things. And yeah, touch it all up with the products, with the paint, with the rust protection as best as best we can. So we shouldn't have any issues. So you just want to spray a bit in the holes of just, and just kind of around it too, like on the edge of it a bit. Yeah. yeah. Wipe that bad boy down. Bloody perfect, mate. Look at us professional car builders. I'm basically a mechanic already, don't even need a certification. Demi's, Demi's decided she wants to do a mechanics course. What's everyone's thoughts? Should Demi well, be a mechanic? You, sh you should buy, you should create a mechanic shop. And I'll then... be the mechanic. Oh, not like that. <laughs> Your face. This is the industrial primer, super etch. So I put a layer of that on, let it dry, and then we got you got some colour coded white spray paint to go on them. Zero four five. Yep. That's the brackets for the visor. They're both painted. I'll probably let them dry a bit more and give them one more coat, and then that'll be ready, all ready to put that visor on. That's the visor, all mounted up there. It's looking very nice. So, I think I said, I can't remember what I said earlier. We got it painted white, match the car on top, and then we got like a brown underneath. Because you don't want a white underneath because it's a bit too reflective and brown to sort of match the brown theme we got going on. Now that the sun visor is sorted, we're going to start these gull wing windows down the back. So, 80 Series Land Cruisers, this model, comes with these twin windows down the back, like the sliding ones. They're not too bad, but they're very easy for people to break into your car. A lot of people tell me they have water leaking through theirs. We haven't had that problem yet. Um, and they're not really that great for access. So, we're upgrading to like those big gullwing lift-up windows. We've got it from the Cruiser Company. I think they're down in Melbourne. They make them. So I've pulled out of the box, Todd's just going through the instructions now. You do get the instructions on their website, which shows you how to do it all. He's already popped that other side window out, he's too quick for me, I didn't even film it yet. And starting to assemble it, and then we'll yeah, start piecing it together. There's no rust in the windows either, which is good. Tiny little mark there where someone's kind of nicked it, but that's fine, we can very easily clean that up. When you're doing jobs like this, taking apart old cars, you can have a bad time finding a lot of rust. So all the holes have been drilled, they've all been repainted to stop rust and so they look nice and then you're just going building all the bracketry now, is that right? Yeah mate, just going through all the instructions, telling us what to do, just pre-assemble, make sure everything fits. So all that bracketry will fit up in the window and then you'll be able to mount the actual the yeah, gull wing right. piece onto it. This is pretty much your mounting plate for your door, so that gets screwed to your car. Seal all this up so no water in that can get in, they put the pinch weld in. So that's a little bit of mastic sealant and that's is that just to help hold water out seal it do you yeah, know yeah it's just a bonding agent and it's also like a dampener as well because you don't do it up straight away let wait till it goes off a bit and it's sort of like a cushion that's what they say it's mainly just for water While Todd's going with those gull wing windows there I have some fire extinguisher brackets I'm gonna quickly whip in so I've got two passenger and driver's footwell and got the two fire extinguishers to go with them as well so these are from cap industries and i've got these in both patrols as well i'll show in here they're just little brackets that mount to the existing holes of the seat so boom boom you got one there one up there they'll mount up there and then your fire extinguisher will clip in there that way you got a fire extinguisher ready at 
the passenger footwell just there and the driver's footwell there. Foot well there. It's one of those safety things I've seen it happen a few times lately. Something catching on fire in a car can be quickly put out with a fire extinguisher if you don't have one. Whole four wheel drive burns to the ground, so it's one of those things that's definitely worth having. We'll quickly whip them in. And Cap Industries make these brackets pretty much all in any four wheel drive. There it is, all mounted up there. I'll do the same on the other side, but yeah, it just bolts onto your existing seat mounts. It sits there, so you just go flip, flip, and out comes the extinguisher. That's both those fire extinguishers in under the seats. Hopefully we will not need them, but we will be very happy if we do, and they are there. On these windows, you got two brackets, isn't that right, Todd? So you got a bottom corner one, the top one, yeah. and then you put silicon or black automotive Sigaflex to be specific behind both of them. Yeah, it's and that's the just water getting in. Yeah, it's just a bit of an extra water seal on them. And then you were saying too that you put nut certs on them, didn't you? Rather than bolts through, just a bit neater. It's sort and of much muchness to me. I'd rather the nut certs, <laughs> just because it's a bit easier to handle when assembling. Yeah, a bit easy to get in or, in or out. So that's one side all done and installed. See, so yeah, obviously you got this replacement window here now, two latches, undo them, and then it comes up on that strut there. And then that just means you can access in the back here, like when we do, you know, we're looking to do a drawer setup and stuff like that in the back, just make it much easier. So it's a pretty cool idea. But the only thing is on the inside there, like that's obviously all nice down through there of the pinch weld, but then it kind of leaves that top bit exposed there. So we're just trying to work out a plan, maybe buying some more pinch weld and doing like a layer along there too. We even talked about cutting it off the old windows, but then that kind of wrecks them, so we don't really want to do that. But yeah, just trying to find up a way to tidy the inside in there, and then it'll be all good. It's just going to be repeat the process on the other side now. So that's how it comes out. You just like you just like grab in behind the rubbers and yeah. yank it out. That's the other side, all done there now. So we've got both of those gull wings in from the cruiser company. That's heaps better for accessing the back of the car though. Like just being able to reach in here and grab what you need and have this all open and set up at camp and that'll be cool. We'll have to come up with some ideas of how we can build like a, you know, drawer set up and maybe like a bit of a dual battery system here that you can access and stuff. But yeah, having these gives you heaps more flexibility of how you can build a cool setup in the back there and access it all. And then Todd has just been mucking around down the back here. Do you want to run us through your idea for the back to make these look a bit neater inside? Yeah, we'll sort of get a bit of alley 1.6 or 1 mil. I'm just get them laser cut that out. <clears throat> then I can get that tucked in behind the trim. And I'll just get a bit of pinch weld and run it around the outside. Yeah, and just cover just up, it up, cover it up and then make it sort of look a bit more well, neater yeah. internally. That would be heaps better. And then Todd's just cut those templates out in the cardboard. So on Monday he's going to take them to the steel shop and get them to laser cut out so under that shape and grab the pinch weld and then yeah, we can mount it in. The next job on the 80 build that we're trying to sort out here now is the sound system. So the sound system that is in there is 
mostly factory and it's fairly average. Now this is the head unit that we pulled out just before. So that was like a upgraded Kenwood unit that was in there. But we were having a few issues with it, like it was just constantly disconnecting from our phones and playing up. And you know, this was it before we bought the car so we didn't have warranty or anything for it. So I wanted to upgrade the head unit and then we've gone with the Polaris head unit, which is the same one I run in the GU and it's been really good for the last couple of years. Which is this one here. So it's like a big floating touch screen that has Apple CarPlay, Spotify, all the things you need. And that's the back double din unit for it there, which will go in. So we just popped the dash out here, we've pulled that old Kenwood one out and that's where the Polaris is gonna go back in. And then while we're upgrading the head unit, we thought, well, we better upgrade the sound too, cause it sounds like crap in here. So the 80 has two, a speaker in each back door, just little four inch ones. It doesn't have any in the front door. It has like a couple little tweeter things up here in the dash in each side. And then it has like a six inch sub amp speaker thing. I don't really understand it, but over the back there, that. And then Demi went shopping this morning to Autobahn and to go over your Polaris, you got yourself some what? Speakers. So they're four inch speakers to go in the back door. But we were like, will these fit on an 80 series or are they going to be too deep? And he was like, nope, they will fit. And we got them home and guess what? They do not fit. Demi's gonna go back to the shop and get like a spacer or something that'll space them out off the door. This is the front door, but just to use it as an example, the window regulator, when it comes down, it clashes with where the speaker um, would go. Like it, it hit the window as it comes down. So we're gonna have to try and space it out so it sits out more. To go with the speakers. To go with the non-fitting speakers. That don't that fit. That we still have to work that out. we still have to work out. We got. We got. But this isn't like a I say so and then you repeat me. <laughs> oh, well, that's what you do every <laughs> single time. Do you wanna start the video? And then you say exactly the same thing after I've said it. Yeah. And then you cut mine out and use yours. Yeah. Well, Standard. I'm the pro here. Back to differ, mate. I'll second that. <laughs> <laughs> then we got a sub and amp combo. So they're the old ones that came out of the back door, they're the factory ones. And they're like literally falling apart. And when you turn the sound up, it just makes hor horrible static noises. Now on the back of the old Kenwood unit, there was actually the adapters needed so that we can plug this Polaris straight into the 80. So that was good. So that Polaris will be able to go in. Demi's gonna have to go back to the shops yeah. Now, tomorrow, something, do a run back to shops to get the spaces. And we're just having a bit of a discussion. Because you've only got four inch speakers in the back door and there's little tweezers in the front, you don't really have anything in the front doors. But if you pull the front door, car, door card off, there is actually a gap for a speaker there, which must be for a different model or whatever. And there's also a speaker plug there too. So we thought, well, why don't we get some six inch speakers for the front doors we'll cut it out make it look nice and then we'll have four six inch speakers the southern amp combo in there somewhere and the big touchscreen polaris head unit and then the sound will be yeah. you have to answer now the sound will be Fully sick. So update on the sound system, it all got too complicated and I decided to bring it down to 12. It's a couple of days later and they're gonna help me with the sound system today rather than me breaking the whole thing myself at home. So we did get the Polaris head unit in, that's all in, installed, working. That was just a pretty simple plug and play once you pulled that dash out. But then wiring up the sub and amp, reverse camera, spacing out these door speakers, how we're gonna adapt six inch speakers in the front door. I was like, no, nah, this is just getting too much. I'm just gonna make a huge mess. So yeah, Dan's uh, gonna get this whole thing sorted properly and get it all tidied up today. So he'll work through all the problems and have all the solutions. This is the reverse camera that those Polaris head units come with. So Dan's just stripping everything down so he can run some wiring through. And we're gonna plug it into the tailgate here. I reckon all we're gonna do is a spacer in here. Yeah. Obviously we'll test how close up the door card comes. Yeah. But so that should actually fit perfectly. And then we just have to cut that little hole in the door card too. Yeah. yeah. So there's a trick to that. Yeah. So what you do is you actually mount your spacer there, you get some screws and you cut the ends off and you have them so they're sticking into the wood. You have your spacer there, you push the door card up against it and you have pin marks in the back of the door card. That's where you know just cut your circle. You're not just guessing. So you have cut a few door cards up before. Just a few. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. There is tri tricks and tips to actually getting it done right. 
So is that a common thing on sound systems? Like door cards just get cut out to make new spots for speakers? In older cars, yes. Yeah, okay. Dan's just been down to Autobahn and grabbed some few spacer options just to make it work and six inch speakers for the front door. They're the kicker ones just to match the back door ones. And Dan said he uses these kicker speakers all the time. They're meant to be, you know, pretty good budget option, I suppose. What were these back door ones? That 120 or something? Sell them out for 100, I think. Yeah, okay. There you go, 100 bucks for those two front six inch speakers. They're meant to be good quality. This is one of the reasons also that we didn't continue this job ourselves because we laid out all the wires we had and we were like, hmm, don't know what half these things do. Maybe let's not break everything. What's your plan for making custom spaces? Um, so basically going off the old speaker for your mounting positions and then cutting a hole big enough for this speaker to sit in. And then this will actually sit on the outside of the door card and then that will the spacer will basically sit in behind. And this is just because they didn't have any four inch spacers? Yeah. So it's like a carpet glue basically for like headliners and stuff. And that's basically the first spacer. A little bit of a slow process just because everything has to be custom for all these speakers in these older cars. So yeah, that's the front plate that Dan made up, back one there to space it, and the speaker will sit in that front plate there like that. The new speakers don't plug into the factory plugs, do they? No. So you just have to cut and solder in or crimp in or? Yeah, so I'm still utilizing the factory plug, like I've left that in the door. Um, and then I just join the speaker wires onto that. That way you still got all your factory stuff left on the car side. Yeah, sweet. Excuse me till I fall. She said she keep it coming. She heard me holler stop. Both the back door speakers are done. I think Dan's moving on to the front six inch ones now. Because these didn't actually have factory speakers in there, they didn't have anywhere for the speakers to bolt in. So I've got these little clips that actually make it so you can screw into them. So you're just trying to get those like screwdriver marks to show punch through a bit? Yep, so just trying to get an imprint on the back. Yeah. Then once we've got an imprint, it'll sort of show that like, six points of where we can do a circle. Yeah. Where the speaker's going to go. Yeah, sweet. And then we know it's 100% accurate. Yep. You're not just putting holes in your walls <laughs> yeah. for no reason. That's it, that's the speaker all in, mounted up. It's looking quite nice there. Dan's gonna do the other door now, pull that off. Same process on the other side. Next job on the list is this sub and amp unit I got. I believe it's an eight inch one from memory. And Dan's reckons under the driver's seat is best. There's enough room under there you can sit down and you still got like clearance above it. We tested the passenger seat, but there's a bit less clearance on the passenger seat and it starts to hit the sub, so you eventually break it. Are they just like a plug and play kit type thing? Basically, so you've got like, obviously your power earth and stuff that you need to run as well. Um, then your RCAs will just plug straight into the back of the head unit. And a bit of tape around the RCAs just to make sure they don't pop out. That's the sub and amp under the seat there. The wires have been run in through the carpet up there into there. Now we just gotta pull this dash apart, pull the Polaris back out, and plug reverse camera in, sub and amp in, and a few bits and pieces. 
There's so many wires at the back there. Yeah. This is half the reason when we had it all apart and I was like, hmm, maybe I won't touch all this. There's a little bit going on. So everything that's plugged in the back here, like quick rundown of what we got. Microphone, don't we? Yep, microphone. Reverse camera. GPS, reverse camera, subwoofer, amp turn on, USBs. And then just all your normal speaker wires and stuff like that. Yep, so all your basic power and everything as well. Dan's just finishing piecing together that sound system now, but we're gonna chuck in some new tail lights that we got down the back here. That's the old ones, which were, yeah, just old. And these are nice, fresh, beautiful new ones. And gets rid of that yellow too. I think it looks better without the yellow. They just straight plug in, are they? Yeah, plug and play. So we'll bang those in. We'll look a bit fresher down the back here. And as well as those tail lights down the back, we are replacing that one and that one on both sides, obviously, with some nice, fresh, clear ones. So that'll go there. Just all the little touches making it look nice, replacing all the old pieces slowly. We just want to come above the rubber so we don't scratch the paint. Yeah. Yeah. So Mitch was saying in shocking news, the part that we bought to fit doesn't actually fit. You yeah, need yeah. to send them back to eBay or Amazon. And ask <laughs> money back. So I just had to file them out a little bit. Literally, like 90% of things you buy just don't fit. You always have to do something to them. Indicator on and indicator. They all keeps nicer. The indicators have to be amber, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Because they got a clear lens, we need an amber globe. Get ready for it not to fit. First guy. Oh wow. It's a miracle. It must be genuine. <laughs> yeah. That's it, all the sound system finished, indicators in, tail lights in, all those little tidy up bits and pieces. It is the next day though, I had to rush out of there last night. And showing off the sound system to the new owner. Me, I am the new owner. Yep, you are the new owner. Also, we should explain because you've been helping heaps in the last few videos, but not so much this episode because you've been too busy. Too many kids to look after. Yeah. So Demi is a bit annoyed about it, but hasn't been able to help out as much at the moment with the build. No, this means I can't use the sound system. Yeah, it wasn't built by you, so can't use it. But yeah, super stoked of how those speakers came out. The sound's unreal. Sounded really good on the way on the drive home last night. We just had to turn the sub and amp down a bit. It was like the whole car was vibrating from the base. My body was vibrating from the base. Not the only time that happens. Oh. Do you want to get a quick rig rundown of the Polaris head unit that we got? This is the Polaris head unit. Yeah, that's your home page. So if you hit uh, speed play, that's the one we normally use. Maps, Spotify, phone calls. That's it's all set up, cool. ready to go. Actually, can you show the reverse camera too? Because yeah. this car actually has a reverse camera. I don't know if the car needs to be on for that, but... Yep, there we go. Look at that reverse camera. So fancy. Heaps of cool features on the Polaris, I guess, give a quick flick through, like I know you can do, you can use the internet, like you can connect it up and use, you can watch Netflix on it, use the web browser, it's got games on it, it's got heaps of cool things on it. We just and, haven't. Yeah, we just it. haven't sorted it all out yet. And the other thing it can do is maps, so it has off-road maps in it too, I'm pretty sure it has HEMA maps downloaded into it. So you can use all maps and stuff when you're full driving. But yeah, they're a pretty cool head unit. That's it though. Another 80 build episode done. I tell you what, it's looking pretty slick in your cockpit now. Custom steering solution, steering wheel. We got the Razorback seat covers in here, which are looking very nice. We got all the sound system, the Polaris head unit. Actually, the only thing we want is a new center console. The Land Cruiser ones suck. It doesn't fit my coffee cups. Yeah. So if anyone has any good center console recommendations... That isn't a fridge. Let us know. That's it though. We'll see everyone in the next episode, which is... Suspension! Suspension! Tires and wheels. You got it. And actually also, I think Todd's coming over tomorrow to fix up those gullwing windows at the back. He's made a little plate and stuff for inside. So if he gets here and does that, I'll quickly show that now. Bye. Goodbye.
Miss Lindy, she likes to dance all day. And when she does rock and roll, it takes her breath away. Well, she's mine. Yeah, she's mine. Well, I love that little girl, but she's so fine. Mom, 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 mom. Are you ready? Are you ready or what? Born ready. You ready? Now that we've got the sun visor sorted, Demi's just gone to the shops to get some paint so we can spray those brackets and, um, yeah, mount. We've got those. That's... By then, wiring up the sub and air, reverse comp, reverse... Boom, 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 boom. Bom bom bom. Bom 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 bom. Bom 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 bom. Bom bom bom.